thanks once again for listening to Cranford Radio. And we're actually completing something that uh, we've been doing for a number of years now, and that is interviewing all of the members of the Township Committee. I'm joined today by Jean-Albert Maisonneuve. He is one of the commissioners, obviously, on the Cranford Township Committee. Jean-Albert, welcome to Cranford Radio. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks for having me. Sorry I might have been ducking you a little bit. I really wasn't. Uh, just a little busy, but a uh, pleasure to be here. Well, glad to have you here. One of the things that I've been trying to do with these interviews that I've done with all of the Township Committee members, some of whom are no longer on the Township Committee, uh, their terms have ended, is really just get to know the person. We're not getting into so much of the day-to-day -day issues that confront Cranford, although we may touch on some of those, but it's really getting to know the person. Uh, a little bit about your background, uh, some of the things that you hope to accomplish, things of that sort. So why don't we start right off by asking you, why did you decide to run for political office in the first place? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I know. You know, I, you know, one of the things that I feel uh, being on the township committee and one of the reasons why I ran uh, to be on the township committee was really just to be of service uh, to the community. And that might sound a bit kumbaya -ish. Uh It is uh, because really um, I feel as though I need to be of service in, in some capacity and I felt uh, this was probably the best way for me to do it. Uh, I was previously on the Downtown Management Corporation, um, the DMC, as most of you know. But I felt, uh, I guess, this higher calling to try to provide to the community that has provided me uh, a lot. Is this your first time serving on any kind of elective office? Yes, it is. Um, I've served on uh, many boards for uh, the companies I've worked for and um, have been volunteer boards and, uh, and being on uh, executive leadership teams. Uh, had some familiarity in, in uh, doing this type of development and this type of work. You mentioned before you actually were elected and decided to run, you served on the Downtown Management Corporation. And I guess you're still serving as the liaison between the Township Committee and the DMC. Is that correct? Yes, I am. And, you know, through that experience of, uh, yeah, I was on the DMC probably about 10 years ago uh, initially and took a sabbatical, so to speak, for about five years and uh, came back on board and, um, you know, was privileged that uh, some people thought it would be a good idea that I take on the higher office based on some of the work I guess I did on the DMC. So uh, it was a great experience, and it's uh, there's such uh, some fantastic people on that board that, that give a lot to the community and, and should be recognized for that. The downtown obviously got a, a great piece of news uh, not too long ago when NJ.com ran an online poll, and out of all the downtowns throughout New Jersey, we were ranked as number one. What do you think that meant for Cranford, and what will it mean going forward? Well, I think that the fun part about it is that, you know, I'll share a little fun information that I had uh, just recently. I had an opportunity uh, to meet with the mayor of Asbury Park uh, initially when we won um, the uh, downtown planning uh, downtown planning award. Uh, Asbury Park was one of the uh, recipients as well and uh, got to meet the mayor at that event. Um, but just recently I was able, we're do doing some business for my company in Asbury Park, uh, had a sit down with the mayor and took the... Um, fun aspect of taking uh, Cranford number one sticker over to his office and dropping it on his desk. So just for that fact, um, that was fantastic. But uh, I think that um, as, as it relates to uh, the, the benefit of, of receiving that type of award, I know initially when I came to Cranford and, and serving on the DMC, most people were complaining that, well, why can't we be more like Westfield? Um, and as times change, now Westfield is saying, why can't we be more like Cranford? And, uh, you know, I think that that's, that's a great honor for us, but we have to keep in mind that we essentially have to keep up um, with what's going on around us. And that as a downtown, it shows how much we've progressed. And I think that people who've been in Cranford for such a long time, I think remember what the downtown looked like. Um, and the, the type of retail stores that were available to us and some of the development. I think sometimes we forget that. But that work and that development uh, through not only the, the people on, on the township committee from past and, and present, and as well as the DMC from past and present, um, it really shows that that progression is really important. And we can't stop. I'm not saying that it's, it's about development, but it's about keeping that welcoming aspect of the town um, and keep on moving forward with it. So uh, that was an important 
uh, win, so to speak, for us to do that because it, it's a real nice pat on the back for all the hard work that people past and present have done for the community. Obviously, the downtown is not your only concern as uh, being a township committee per- member. What are some of the other responsibilities that you have? Well, uh, this year I was, uh, I am uh, now the uh, commissioner of DPW and engineering. So uh, that has its own uh, challenges. And, uh, you know, our uh, DPW head, Steve Wardell, does him and his crew do an amazing job uh, for this community. So they actually make things pretty easy to be the uh, commissioner for that. It's just kind of, oh, wow, watch him. Watch them plow. I'm like, that's great. I feel so good. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, engineering, we, we, we had a little bit of setback because our, our township engineer, Bill Mazel, uh, has decided to move on to bigger things uh, for, for him and his family. Uh, so there, there is a bit of more of challenge there because of our infrastructure uh, it requires so much. Um, that's everything from road paving to, to sewers to, to that development. So um, those are some of the, the big challenges that we'll face this year. You know, again, I know that's, that's uh, quite important to our residents. So uh, that, that's one of the new challenges that I face in terms of, okay, we have so much money and we have so much infrastructure work that has to be done. And how do we do that? And we are really in the midst of that right now. So uh, that's keeping me pretty busy. <laughs> You mentioned infrastructure, and that's an issue that is not just a township concern, but it's something that we see on the state level and even on the federal level, trying to figure out how are we going to take care of all the infrastructure. What are some of the challenges that beyond just money that go into addressing the infrastructure issue? Well, I think, you know, part of it is uh, it's almost human nature. Uh, you know, I can kind of use an example of, of how we look at infrastructure because I am a very big infrastructure guy, and I could use uh, my home as an example. My home was built in 1900. There's a lot of work that has to be done to a home that was built in 1900. But, you know, I've always been the kind of guy I want to pull up to my house and just feel comfortable. It's like, oh, wow, this is a great house. I'm happy. But, you know, the heater doesn't work. The plumbing is a problem. The electrical is knob and tube. I don't have any air conditioning in the place. That's all, all infrastructure. All that work has now been done to my house, but you would never know it because you can't see it. Um, so sometimes as uh, commissioners, when we make decisions, some of those decisions you can't really see. You know, I, it's dealing with some sewer issues and road issues. It's beneath the surface, so you could fix it. So sometimes it's not always noticeable. And sometimes if you're not on that particular street, you would never know that all that work was done and all that money was spent in order to do that. So sometimes people, and it's just not to make anybody wrong, but human nature is like, if you can't see it, you know, not much was done. So those are, those are some of the challenges that we face that are quite important. And I think from the federal level, I mean, look, we have the gateway tunnel that we've talked about. Uh, you can't really see the tunnel. Well, we already have a tunnel. It's fine. Try taking the, looking at the pictures of that tunnel. It's going to crumble. So it is such an important aspect of it, and I think it is the most important aspect of it from a federal, state, and local level because without our infrastructure, you could, you could build a new road on top of something that's going to cave under it if, you, if you're not accustomed to that. Or you look at a bridge and just say, well, it's still standing. What do we have? Just paint it. You know, but we don't see the cracks under it, and I think those are incredibly important. I want to switch a little to a bit about you and your background. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up and uh, what you've done uh, during your career. Okay. Well, I am first-generation American. Uh, my, my family actually emigrated from Haiti, uh, but my, my background is, is uh, you know, my grandparents were French and Haitian and Lebanese, so I have a bit of a mix in there. Even though my last name is pure French, uh, that's, a, that's a bit of the mix, but I am a first-generation American. Uh, I was born in Queens, New York, Jackson Heights to be exact, and, uh, but I consider myself a Jersey boy. Give me the shore or the beach for my Monmouth and Ocean County friends. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, I've been uh, raised out in western New Jersey, um, everywhere from Branchburg to Hoboken, to Bridgewater, to now Cranford, and lived in the, at the shore in, in the summertime. So I'm pretty familiar and I think ingrained myself to be a pure Jersey boy uh, at this point. Um, you know, have, have family in Canada all over the place. Uh, from a career perspective and from a school perspective, I graduated from 
At the time, it was Glassboro State College. Now it's Rowan University.